Thank you. Rough, rough. Time back on. That's rough, rough. Welcome to the captain's run. Uh, we're up here in Adelaide. Down here would almost be the better way of saying it because we've normally Absolute, been up in Richardson. Absolutely would be the better way to say it. Uh, so we're down here in Adelaide, up here from Melbourne though. Yep. Um, and Angus Brayshaw again returning as co-host. Thanks for having me. It's good to be back. Um, still haven't changed the name. To yeah, I noticed captain's that off run. the top. That's okay. It's your uh, show. I don't want to step on anyone's toes. But thanks for having me. No worries. Um, we're fresh off. This will come out tomorrow. But yep. that'll still be fresh off uh, a victory at Adelaide Oval. Yes. Um, we were able to get the win against Adelaide in a pretty hard-fought battle. Yeah, um, absolutely. First three quarters uh, was a genuine contested brand of footy that might not have been great for the eye uh, if you're watching on uh, your Fox footies or Channel 7s or wherever it was. But um, the fourth quarter able to run away mainly because of some of the stuff you were dishing up in the fourth quarter, which was very good. Um, how did you feel about the game? Uh, yeah, I agree. I think, it, you know, people look at Adelaide maybe and see the position on the ladder and say, you know, we should have won. And I think that for the first three quarters was a real good arm wrestle. So all credit to them. They they put up a good fight. And yeah, the last quarter was probably, we just were able to do it for longer. Yep. And uh, no, it's a, it's good to get on the winner's, the winner's board again after uh, last week. Day of the game flight. That's um, yeah, and first time I've really done it. And two-hour bus ride before that as well. We were travelling for four hours. Yeah, it wasn't a two-hour bus trip in Adelaide. The airport is literally in the CBD. True. There's not much going on in Adelaide. Not a whole no lot. traffic. Um, so we're able to get to the hotel pretty quickly. But day of the game flight uh, and uh, about a four-hour window before we had to get to the game. It almost felt like two days, to yeah. be honest. Because I did have a nap there in the afternoon as well, which I'm sure you, yeah. you get a couple I'm a, of I'm hours. a big napper. I had a bit of a panic moment as well, which you you saw, you the, caught the back end of. The Australian Eastern Standard Time. Yeah, our calendar um, sinks up to the Eastern Standard Time of Australia, which is 30 minutes in front of uh, the Adelaide time. So I woke up from my nap at 5 Adelaide time, which is 5.30 Melbourne time, and it yeah. said we had a uh, – the buses were leaving at 5.30 that sounds a very wordy, but I woke up thinking the buses were about to leave, so I yep. sprinted downstairs and it wasn't wasn't the case. So false alarm. But maybe um, you should always be in a frantic before you go to a game because oh, played some pretty good footy. It, that, it took took three quarters, but that's okay. That's all right. It took three quarters for most of our team. True. And how are you going? Because uh, a few bumps and bruises uh, would be a severe understatement. Yes. Um, so well publicised. Uh, about my Dorsius uh, Minimus I, yeah, Latius I think I've called it my lat yeah um, areas surrounding my lat is what is actually the injury but mm-hmm. um, I did a pretty good go at it um, no I was very impressed yeah, you I've, stood up and uh, were counted I genuinely uh, did, had a fair crack at tearing my lat off the bone I think it's still there um, but a lot of specialists a lot of chats with Darren Burgess and he at the drop of a hat or call his European yeah. friends. That's his power um, move, isn't yep. it? Europe. So I don't even think he asked them about lats. He just wanted to call his European friends. Um, lots of goalkeepers have had the injury, yeah. apparently. Okay. Um, and were able to play through. Uh, wow. Not my role, really, goalkeeping. Um, and uh, yeah, obviously the big scoop again throughout the week. As we alluded scooping. in the podcast uh, last week was the arrival of... Um, Danielle yep. into the hub and um, a few others Yeah, now we can talk about how she has arrived and how she's fitted into the group and what are your the, preliminary thoughts well the dynamic of an extra 20 people in our hub we've grown from 70 to 90 um, to be honest I'm, I'm very happy to be out of there uh, only because and I found this out today it's it's um snake breeding season up there. It, so what you have done there is you have avoided the Danielle question and went to the next point we both have on our list on snakes. Happy to go back to which Danielle. Which is a bit of a sliver remove. Sl- talking about sorry. snakes. Slither. I think he just tried to say slither. But yeah, so Danielle is up. It's a, it's a hyperbole. And, Hyper. and, so, and so are 20 <laughs> others. I think they've fit in pretty well. Hyperbole. What- hyperbole was it? Hyperbole? Hyperbole is Hyperbole. Um, Yeah, so Danielle's fitting in. It is snake season. We have seen, well, I not personally, but within our WhatsApp group that is the hub yeah. WhatsApp, um, there has been three snakes that have been sent through. Did you see the most recent one? Is there four? Four. I think it's four. And this one was another one with a lump in the middle of it. So for those who don't know, one of the snakes had a, I would say, what's a, like a small rodent. Like if you can imagine like a, 
little joey or a possum yep. like lump in the middle of the snake so it's obviously just had a feast and it's digesting we actually had to make sure teddy melksham was still around yeah yeah we had a we did a head check um counted up all the kids and we ticked that box but it's a matter of time because that's the sort of thing that you know snakes like to eat i've told josh marnie if i see 10 snakes on the trip i'm you, out of the hub you're done i'm out of the hub well there's no snakes down here so we're we're, 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 we're good in adelaide we're happy here and you, um, don't, you don't like snakes uh I I'm I don't like saying I have a fear of snakes because I know at some point someone will be like, oh, face your fears, hold a yeah, snake. Sure. So then I don't build up that I actually have a fear of snakes. I like I've got a fear of heights, which I so, don't actually. So you're lying to yourself. So I'm lying to myself sure. to make sure that I never get in the situation where yeah. I have to hold a snake as a prank or sure. as a face my fears type thing. But yeah, I don't know if anyone, the people that say I'm not scared of snakes, I'd like to, I'll put a killer python. Is it, that's a lolly. Not the Alan snake, yeah. the real, <laughs> the, the reptilian a variety. A that kills yeah. in front of them and See, I'm angry. See, I'm not afraid of snakes. Oh, if I put an angry snake in front of you, I guarantee you, you will not just sit there so and go, the oh, thing, have a look at that brown belly, whatever they call it. The, um, the, so there's red belly black snakes we've got. We've got king browns, which are venomous and dangerous. And then there's a few carpet pythons that float around. But the thing is, and I've watched enough David Attenborough to know that um, they're more afraid of you are than we are of it and they hear the vibrations yeah, so they don't they yeah, don't listen to you snake talkers and don't move when you see one i'm, I'm moving no no, no I'm you move quickly. don't worry I'm about moving get out of there but when we and we often walk in big packs yeah. and if you're walking in groups then they would you know the more people the more afraid that i think is the the rationale and um yeah I, I i feel pretty safe but um i'm not sure everyone shares that that view i had to walk three so you were talking about danielle i walked yeah. danielle um, Bronwyn, Jane Hunt's girlfriend, and um, Georgie Brinkworth home the other night because no, they refused to walk home by themselves. And Georgie Brinkworth is Alex Neil Bullen's partner. Bullen's sorry, partner. that's okay. And um, yeah, so I mean, the you know, fear is gripping the hub. Yeah, snake fear. Uh, On to the bigger topics. Yeah, sure. There is um, for those that are watching the front bar. Yep. Um, which I, th- I, I think is it's one of the better TV shows, especially football-related TV shows yeah. that you can watch. Absolutely. I think it's well and um, truly up there. They don't cover the big topics, which I love. Yeah. Um, they literally just get down to the funny stuff and they interview some of the past players that we all used to love growing up watching. Um, but they're looking after something very important to you. Yeah. Uh, and those that have followed you on Instagram throughout isolation – uh, would know n- would know that you're you're on a journey I am um, care to explain uh, what the front bar are looking after for you yeah well I mean if, if you followed me and you're listening to this and you probably know it's it's my brown my beloved brown onion crop that's yep. growing in my pot um, yeah so we were obviously uh I couldn't. I, I spoke to Marns. The first thing I did, I got on the phone. I said, "Can I bring my golf clubs?" Yep. And then, "Can I bring my onions?" <laughs> and when the onions yeah, right. got when the onions got admitted, then I said, "Danielle can she can come in the onions place." Interesting onions are behind golf clubs. Yeah. Well, I can't. Yeah, that's it. That is interesting because if yeah. you had noticed, I can play golf with my onions. Did yeah. you see that video? Yeah, I did see that video. You like that? Uh, fifty-fifty. Okay. <laughs> anyway, front, front bar said. Um, We'll take your onions off your hands. Yep. And I think, you know, it's probably the best of both worlds because they've got a fair following um, and that would help keep someone accountable for the, the well-being of my onions. Yep. I have seen a few photos. I mean, they're, they're having a laugh. I think they're doing it for a laugh, but also like... Um, they're not actually looking after it, are they? Yeah, I, I don't think so. I also think that, and this is a little confession, another scoop. Yep. I've never grown... I'm not a farmer yep. i don't really know i know how to plant them i did a lot of research on how to get them in the pot i actually don't know how to finish them off the yep. onions so i don't know when they're ready or or what so i think i assume they're going to stuff up somewhere along the way and that'll be like my exit plan my exit plan yep. as opposed to i don't know i don't know what i'm going to do next so <laughs> <laughs> it's it's worked out well i'm getting yep. updates daily from um paying so we'll maybe get him on next week what is that yeah you can use your your contacts at front bar to potentially yeah mate i'll get, take care of it I, yeah. don't worry i'll get this one sorted um but yeah no they're, they're so far so good so um it's good it's, a, it's, an, it's just a weight off my shoulders i don't have to worry about them you know what i mean all right and apologies for anyone that isn't interested in the barbie onions but well i mean if you aren't then yeah. you should probably leave the channel we don't want to hear from you if it's you're an honest. unbelievable when you 
got me on to Barbie Young and throughout the Isolated You're huge period. I was on them. I was like a yeah. once a fortnight type person. You're huge. I now. went every night. Yeah. yeah. And, and typed in Google, is Barbie Young good for you? And they are. They have uh, actually, and we don't have enough time. We're under a bit of a time crunch today, but yeah. t- potentially another whole episode on the, uh, the benefits of having onions in your diet. Speaking of time crunching. Sure. We're going to our first segment. Okay. Um, probably let's down the show in terms of segments I mean we love the past player call we love calling the supporter yeah we do um, I mean yeah. I just think like you know when you have a plate of food and there's like you know back in when you were a kid and the Brussels sprouts and the stuff that you didn't yeah. really like but you have to have them on your plate yeah. so I think that's when my mind when I visualise what we're about to do yeah. it's, you have to have it but no it's just like just get it out of the way and yeah. so here we are what is it the news it's the news He's got the news. He's got the news. Gee, they, they were some nice words to hear, Gus. Um, thanks for having me <laughs> back on the show. Yep. For some reason, you seem to be trying to break your own news now. Yep. I'm not really about it. I'm trying to hold my place. Um, did we um, take any of your news? Yeah, you did. Were the onions on there? The onions weren't. <laughs> okay. A few sightings for the MRO mm. from last night's game. It was a pretty tough, uh, feisty game of footy. Yep. Uh, no actual report just yet but Alex Neil Bullen and Jay Lockhart have both been looked at I've heard you ask them a number of times today how many weeks they've got so uh, hopefully no weeks but nothing confirmed yeah, just yet Alex, what did Jay Lockhart do Alex Doug know. Bullen we're calling him <laughs> <laughs> I he, saw the dump I didn't know what Jay did Neil Bullen might not be welcome back into his home state he was getting some serious boos really? last yeah, night yeah, yeah right uh, um, that'll hurt Alex because he's a yeah. proud he's South a, Australian yeah, he and loves the city of, the of nicest, churches yeah. nicest people going around uh we are staying in Adelaide until Sunday. We've only got 29 players over here, so selection might have to be from those guys. Now, the, yep. the others back at home are going to have a practice match on Saturday. Yep. Um, other news today has been that round 13 fixtures come out. We're going to play the Bulldogs at Marvel. I'm expecting it some... Oh, Marvel. Sorry, uh, Marvel sorry. Stadium. Uh, we got made, a new that, hub. made that Metricon. we got a stadium. new hub. Holy in, dooly. A new hub down no, at Marvel. No, Metricon at, Stadium. Metricon. And then I'm Fun ex- fact about that game. Yes is we're using red footies for the first time this year. So red footies pre-230. Wow. And that game is at 145. How about that? So it's the first time we use a red footy. And I, I'm not sure about you two, but when I think football, I think red football. I also think red football. And they're very rarely used. It's pretty much only the early game on the Saturday yeah. that uses red footies. Here's another one for you. Yeah. We've always been the second team to run out. Yeah, it's weird. I'm, Every I thought home game. and away there was a big thing there, but we oh. always run out second. Then I thought alphabetical order, I think but we've no, played I think Port it's Power. power move. Okay. I think it's Darren Burgess saying we'll run out when we want to run out. Mm. Well, and the if, AFL is just bowing down. If that Burger. is the case, we'll cut that out because we don't want to out Burgess' <laughs> trick. But uh, if it's not, we'll look into that. Yeah. Some good insights there. Uh, possible trip to Alice Springs coming up, I'm feeling. No exact uh, mail there, but a little feeling. I would like to go to Alice. It is sort of our new home. We've got John Ralph on the show, just throwing out <laughs> speculation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I do mean, love we Alice. We told you about what news is last facts. week. We wanted that facts. is not news. Well, let's just see if that one comes I true. Do. We love Alice Springs. <laughs> we do love Alice Springs, though. The other news has been some real wacky hub requests. I'm not saying that they're coming from Melbourne. I'm not yep. saying that it was either of the two of you, but some people potentially wanting puppies, some wanting their rooms remodeled, uh, new mattresses potentially. Have you guys that, that requested anything Max strange? Gorn. Uh, uh, how I, do you fit in your bed? I have sent one through to the AFL, a, a, a request. Vis-a-vis uh, the bed size? A, a hub request. And it's, can you please get the third most venomous snake? out of my resort is all I've requested <laughs> how'd um, that go it's uh, apparently there was a ranger there over the oh uh, yeah 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 there was a video of the a ranger up was a tree there last pulling night, a snake which out which is exciting um, apparently he let him let him go in the forest and now he's back so yeah I figured um, that's my one request to the AFL if they can just get the, ven- the venomous snakes that could cause uh, death yeah, um, just away from the resort. That's did, not a bad way to look at it. Did you research snakes before coming in here? Because your knowledge was no. I just I, don't like, I like snakes. Yeah, I like uh, all um, animals. I think as a general lot of lot of David Attenborough, um, Nature Channel sort of stuff. Now, did we do our shapes? Well, I did. We actually went down to Woolworths, bought 
all six. Yep. In fact, we actually bought one of the wrong ones. We went back in well, and got a seven. seven. I thought there was seven. seven. Well, have you yeah. left nacho out? No, we got nacho. Yeah, okay. nacho but is, it doesn't have yeah. original on the box. Okay. Mm. Maybe it's been around for long enough that we long think it's original. We, okay. Let's but go with six then. Because nacho is both, both of our sevens anyway. We're taking nacho. I'm going to take nacho out. But we're pushing it back to next week because we've got all the boxes. Oh, yeah. We're going to have a taste test. Okay. Uh, it's going to be... Can I just say on that before, we, before we deviate? Yep. I had mine down. I had... Nacho and cheddar down the bottom. Spoiler. Spoiler. Mm. But the five others, I had them in an order and we were talking about it on the bus and I looked at my list and I was like, gee, it could go it could literally go five or six different ways here. Yeah. So I'm excited for the taste yeah, test. We can all agree that cheddar's probably not at the Cheddar top. is uh, But Clayton Oliver a, today said cheddar is number one for him. Was he was he joking? No, he was deadly serious. Okay, well, yeah, maybe right. we get Clarion to explain that one well, day. We've got all that to look forward to yes, next we week. Uh, just one last one back yep. at home, AFLW trade period, big part of the Melbourne Footy Club. We've seen Harriet Cordner, Alicia Newman, Bianca Jacobson, Catherine Smith, they've all departed so far. Who have we so, got left? Has anyone yeah, signed? Todd Patterson has decided that the draft is the way to go. It so seems, okay. get it seems some young talent so in. So if the draft doesn't go ahead due to COVID, we're playing with 11 players. That could be correct. You can Daisy Pierce does play for five sometimes, so that could. You work. have had that lined up. You've got that circled in your little book. Yep. Daisy Bring Pierce up plays Daisy for five. Pierce plays for five people. Yep, that's Skip. it. Beautiful. That was well played, Benny. Um, getting better and better every week. Yeah. Although that little speculation one, um, we'll have to we sort don't deal with right hypotheticals out. here, do we? <laughs> oh, it's we, concrete or nothing. We love facts. <laughs> we love facts. Um, anyway, we'll be back after this break. Thanks to our co-principal partner and podcast sponsor, Zurich Insurance. For over 100 years, they've been insuring the people and things you truly love. And just like you, they truly love footy and they truly love the Ds. Welcome back, Captain's Run, uh, sponsored by Zurich. Uh, in fact, I'm wearing a new hat today, Angus. Yep. Um, it's the New Era Heritage Series. Uh, apparently, there's only 100 of these and I have one. So that means there's how many left? 99 left. Uh, and apparently they're at the Demon Store. Are they allowed to? Are people allowed to go into I the Demon Store? I dare say they're not allowed to go in. Mm. But it's I'm an online job. Couriers could get them out to. It's an online uh, job. Yeah, but I've got one, so I'm okay. not too fussed about everyone else. But sure. I've got one. Um, that's one you had. We're sponsored by Zurich, and this is a great segment. It is one of my uh, favourites here. One of my we go, favourites. We go through the phone and yep. we see past players, and we decide which ones to call. Um, we've had some greats: Colin Garland, Cam Pedersen. Um, who did we have last week? Geordie, Geordie McKenzie. Veg McKenzie. Um, but this week we thought, why not just put the phone call away and get an in-house person? We've got a couple of people that have roles at the club that used to play here, like Matthew Whelan, mm. um, Bernie Vince and Jordan Lewis, who are both mm. left us now, but they yep. used to be. Um, but we have uh, the two-timer. Two-time. Uh, or where he would debate eight times because he's won a couple of Deer Park stuff. Yeah, but sure. Shannon Burns. <laughs> Max, Angus, thank you. Thank you for that. Former uh, number 10. Former yes. number 10, yes. yes. Sorry. Yes, we are. Have yeah. to throw respect. that straight out Respect. There. A lot of yeah. respect. Yeah. Um, we it. have to, obviously, you do work at the club, so it's um, very handy. Although you yeah. wouldn't know because you've come in casual clothes. But Yeah, uh, I wasn't sure what the... the there was pilot. no brief on that. So okay. You're not wearing any major That's labels. on the producers, yeah. that one. <laughs> Angus, Angus in his first podcast wore a massive... Uh, brand that was opposing to New Balance. Yeah. Okay. Um, but we've sorted that out now. Yeah, I'm, yeah. In, I'm in my gear. Straight off the top, Burns, you just got a quick one for you. Yes. yes and it might not be so quick because uh, the ramifications of this are far spread. We've got a huge ping pong tournament going on at the club. We do. Uh, Gorney and I are heading for a face off in the we second round. We've got to get past our, yeah, our wild card. You might not be able to play. I'm digressing. I'm going to get back on the birdsy because yeah. I remember watching you and Jack Watts play and I just mm. thought that you were the best thing I've ever seen and you're the second seed. How on earth that happened? What's going on? And did you protest that at all? Did you put up a fight or? Uh, he created the seeds. I did create really? the seeds. Yeah. Wow. A lot about self-promotion. Um, it, uh, Is that tactical? Yeah, maybe it was. Maybe it was for our number one seed, Matt Egan, who is a very, very good player, I must admit, um, head of development here at the football club. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a wasted youth. Um, uh, yeah, a lot better at table tennis than I should be, probably. Um, had some epic battles over the years with Watsy, yep. um, Jeremy Howe. Maxie's very 
backhand yeah, uh, dominated. Just hit it to his forehand. But you yeah. obviously put me in there with the names like how. Well, it's, yeah. it's a courtesy. It's your yeah. show. We don't want to step on your toes. You're in the top 10, yeah. yeah. We all have sort of alter egos. Yours is Isna, I believe. Yeah, Johnny Boy. Yeah. Yeah. You tweeted yeah. him, didn't you? I served Volley. Back on Bernsey. Sorry, mate. So yeah. Sure. Um, I go by Rafa. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. I pump myself up too much, and that's probably goes with the number two seed because yeah, he still probably sure. sits yeah. behind uh, left hander as great well. Roger. So, um, yeah, love love it. Great pastime, and uh, hopefully, um, I'll raise the, the the trophy at the end of uh, the hub life. Who do you have in the first round? Uh, we're straight through the second round, okay. being uh, such a high seed. So just, that's just handy. Uh, must be nice. Must be nice out in the practice course. Very nice. At the moment. That's handy that um, the person running the competition has given himself a walk through. Um, I round. think there'll be a royal inquiry into that if uh, you get over the line. Uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Anyway, footy now. Um, well, let's talk about footy gone. Yeah. Um, obviously spent many years at Geelong. I did. Uh, two AFL premierships, including one VFL flag, I think. That's correct. Uh, at Geelong. Yeah. Um, and then came to Melbourne. Yes, in I 2012, uh, the first year of uh, Mark Neald. Yes. Came across with D-Rod. Well, not yes. yeah, D-Rod obviously came from Port Adelaide, but... Yep, Dorsey. Um, yep. Yeah, Dorsey. Uh, and you, you ventured into probably one of the hardest pre-seasons <laughs> that I've personally done. And I dare yeah. say what you've done as well because um, yep. you did every single session that year. Yep. Just the differences between the Geelong <laughs> of 2011 and then the Melbourne of 2012. Uh, probably the first thing I noticed was we weren't training on a football field. We were actually training on a rugby oval, which mm. I found sh- strange. Yeah. <laughs> strange. Yeah. Um, we are a football club. Um, yep. so, we yeah. were venturing in the rugby every now and then. Yeah, yeah. I guess. I guess you do. You, yeah. you, you dabble. But um, um, so that was one one thing that stood out. Um, Sorry, this is the Goshers Paddock rugby field. Yeah. Yes, that was our oval. And why not the football? Because Collingwood, Collingwood were there at the ah, time. Okay, sure. Um, so that was strange. Um, and then the, the fitness of the group was through the roof. Yep. Um, I will say that if football was played in decathlon style in 2013, I think we would have won the flag by a mile that yep. year. We had the fittest blokes in the league. Um, just a shame a few of us probably couldn't kick a footy as well so yeah. as, as we would have liked that year. So um, a lot of fit guys and, yeah, I've never never ran further in my life than that preseason, I'll, I'll say that. There was some genuinely big days. Mark, one of Mark Neild's uh, big ones was um, you get paid as full-time athletes, which, which mm-hmm. we did, um, so we should work full-time hours. Um, so Interesting. Nine, nine till five, seven days a week was sort of his... Uh, way you wanted to go. We did uh, have seven, a nap in there yeah, as well. We had scheduled naps uh, really? during the day. But Seven days a week, that's above and beyond your regular because nine to five extends from Monday to Friday. Yeah, what? so he, mm. he had some interesting philosophies, but Shannon definitely wasn't used to that because Geelong had a bit more of a relaxed feel about it. Yes, yes, no, it was a bit more casual and I, I think winning certainly helps the, yeah. the the strength of the playing group in regards to how much training they they want uh, to do and yeah I think we had a few Brownlow medalists and Norm Smith medalists by that time so if they're saying we're doing too much coach tends to go yeah we're probably doing too much yeah. so um, that was probably the one thing we didn't have in our group to be able to override that when at Tom the time. Gillies tells Mark Neal we're doing too much doesn't really yeah, have the same pull. Didn't quite have the same weight. That yeah. was that was probably the only difference. Though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, now, obviously, the two flags um, and the VFL flag, but also emergency for the losing grand final and the winning grand final. Yes. So you've yes. been in and around the grand final day at an AFL. I've done a few since. parades. I've done four parades. <laughs> yeah, four parades. Yeah. That That's doesn't crazy. get mentioned on the wiki, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, two flags, four parades. So. What's the best memory out of all that? If you had to just pick one, I know it's hard. Oh, God. the Port Adelaide game must have been. Yeah, that that was that was obviously good. Um, I felt I probably contributed more to the O nine um, flag, yeah. and and I played all that season. So personally, that was a bit that was more satisfying for me. Yeah. Um, and yeah, look, the celebrations are always always um, good memories from those times. That's for sure. Are you getting sick of the um, reunions? 
Um, I'm not sure I ever will. No. no yeah. um, we started having reunions three years after we'd won the first one. So <laughs> um, any excuse really. And and we've got to the point now where it wasn't just the 22 that, that come to the reunions. It's everyone that was involved at the footy Some club. Genuine characters in that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, no, we're, we're pretty big on during the year you say, if you, you know, you're not playing, you're just as much involved. Well, that, that should carry through to the reunions, we so feel. So Ryan Gambles and Charlie uh, Gardner. Yeah, are, absolutely. They're yeah. all there. Um, yeah, the rookie listed players, trainers, everyone. Everyone yeah. gets a gig. So, um, yeah, they're good times. Good times. Um, finishing up in 2014? Yes, I did. Yeah. Uh, obviously, didn't get exactly what you wanted out of your Melbourne career. No, 23 games wasn't, uh, yeah, what I had in mind when I first uh, came over. So, it's very yeah, disappointed with that. Um, but, yeah, I did break, get a crack in the navicular, which... Um, tends to be the end. Doesn't ten, help. Tend to make, the, um, yeah, the decision for me. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, I would have loved to, yeah, obviously played a lot longer at, at the club and that's, you know, it's turned into a 10-year deal. I'm still here. So, <laughs> um, Alistair Lynch had one and now I've got one yeah. of the days. Yep, yep. Yeah. Similar, similar ilk. Similar, similar price. Player. Front-ended. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just, I'll message John Ralph. He'll be able to tell me what you're on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> No worries. Yeah. Uh, you did get two Brownlow votes in a game. I did, yes. Uh, the great story around this, Angus, you've been to Oktoberfest, which yeah. is a beautiful time. Slash yeah, great culture. World. Great culture. Great culture. I didn't see too much of Munich, but I saw the tents. <laughs> yep. um, anyway, we were there one night and were able to get the Brownlow live on our mobile phones because we had a feeling that Shannon Burns was potentially going to poll in a, in a game. Well, I mean, it sounds as though your suspicions were confirmed. Yeah, yeah. look, yeah, I didn't want to tell, I don't want to make a big deal of it. So yeah. I only told six or seven tables around me. I didn't, I didn't, <laughs> I, I didn't tell that the whole 10. Yeah. Sort yeah. of just keep it, you know, keep in, it, in the tight group, group that yeah. we were tight yeah. with at the yeah. time. Um, and uh yeah, look, I must admit there was a part of me that was a little bitter I didn't get the three that day. Yeah. Um, but the other part of me was really drunk and just happy everyone was getting around me. Yeah, so, sure. um, Well, Gorney knows all about moment. being bitter about not getting votes, but what game was it and how did you look? Uh, did you wear your a stats helmet? line? Did you wear a helmet that game? Was what was your what stat line? There was no helmet worn. Yeah, right. That's um, interesting you got yeah, both. Yeah, yeah. Gorney no no, no peroxided hair or anything like that that would make me stand out. <laughs> yeah, just Gorney loves being bitter. What, so what was your stat <laughs> line? Um, yeah, we, we digressed. Um... My stat line, I think that day, I think I had 24 and yeah, kicked three goals, two or something like that. Yep. So, you know. <laughs> Five it, tackles. Whatever. Like right, set up a few. It was like, an amazing okay. game. If people yeah, remember what that. it was, we, uh, we were 50 points down at three-quarter time almost. Yes. Um, and the, the drums were beating. I remember oh, yeah. watching Mark Neal would go back up the race at three-quarter time <laughs> and the MCC members weren't exactly happy with his performance. No, <laughs> this is not long after the Essendon game, um, a couple of weeks you know, prior to that. which Shannon uh, Burns and Michael Evans turned it on in the last quarter. Oh, well, if, you, if you say so, Max, yeah. I'll let you. Yeah. Final yeah. score? You tell the story. Uh, we won. We actually ended the winner by about 20 points. Yeah, we did. We, yeah, we, we did run over him pretty yeah. hard that day. Um who got yeah, the three? Uh, good question. Jonesy. Nathan Jones. Okay. He's got enough. Yeah, like, well, and that, yeah. that was another part of it. He's, like, got, a, he's got a facial feature that is quite recognisable. Yeah, they see the, they see the dome out. and they go bald. Bald or helmet, or, really. Yeah, you got to have some beards. Or beard. Mm. Um, going back okay. right to the start, um, you were definitely uh, classified as a small forward. Um, yes. Yep. And you are one of the smallest players to play uh, AFL football. Uh, must have been a very hard challenge to be able to wave to recruiters or try and get their attention. Yeah. Um, you end up being rookie drafted. Um, and then I'm guessing your first couple of years at Geelong still would have been hard with this small, um, the small stature. Yeah, yeah. Um, I remember I so. two years ago, Kay Chandler first got to the club and asked you this question. He said, I'm obviously quite small as well. Um, not me. This is Kate Chandler speaking. Yeah, yeah okay. Sounded quite yeah, stupid if I yeah, said Yeah, that, it makes no sense. Yeah, um, go on. And he said, how, how did you get through? And it, it, you actually gave a really good answer. Um, care to give it again? <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 what's this answer? Well, well, tell us how, how uh, being small uh, hindered you early and um, you end up using it to your advantage. Yeah, look, I, I think us, we we small people, yep. as we prefer to. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to discriminate. 
uh, to call ourselves. Uh, we don't see ourselves as, as small as probably <laughs> the rest of the world does. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I guess that's an advantage we have from the get-go. Um, and the advantage we do have is when the ball's not in the air and yeah. on the ground, we're actually closer to the footy. So there's obviously that. Um, and leg speed's probably one thing I've probably had over everyone else as well. So you've, you've got to, you know, make the most of your own um, advantages that you have on everyone else and um, and keep that confidence about you and, and know that, uh, yeah, once, once the ball hits the deck, um, you're in a better position than most. So. And, and look, Burns, you, I'm sorry, mate. Gawney's a massive discriminator, so I, yeah. I didn't want to bring this up. It's It's gone to this place, unfortunately. This is not what we're about as a podcast, so sorry no. for making you feel uncomfortable. No, that's fine. That's fine. I'll talk to the producers after. Yeah, of course. Um now, your role at the football club, we haven't really uh, talked about that. We said you worked here. Um, yes. Early on, you were thinking coaching, uh, initially getting out of footy, uh, and then quickly realised that maybe player development is probably more your strength. Yep. Um, I think every every player probably thinks coaching at yep. some point because um, they're not sure what else they want to do. Um, but, yeah, I, I guess for me, um, I've, I've experienced pretty much all – sides of footy as a player um, coming off the rookie list a uh, bit of a fringe player there for quite some time at the Cats and then becoming a cemented player playing in premierships and then playing um, at a club that wasn't going so well um, for a period of time there as well so it rounded out my character and I felt like I, I, I had a good understanding of what everyone on the list was going through um, so that's where my interest grew in, in wanting to um, provide support for everyone on the list um, um, outside of just focusing on the coaching and um, yeah, did did uh, my first year in a bit of coaching, a bit of welfare, and then from there I realised that um, yeah, the off field was what I got the most enjoyment out of. In my humble opinion, uh, we have one of the best in the competition in that space. In my uh, in my yeah. not so humble opinion, I know we've got the best in. Yeah, not in that the we comp. deal with the other seventeen, but um, no, I'm going hard. Yeah. Yeah. It's all burns. Yeah, yeah. Are you been busy. That. Have you been busy of late? Uh, hub life certainly uh, yeah spiked the numbers. Yeah, um, early days. Um, which is fair. Normally you're dealing with four or five sort of players at a time, but yeah, early days it was probably the whole mm. the whole list had something going on. Um, but I feel like yeah, we've started to settle now. Players have got the um, people who are important to them in, in the hub with them, um, which is really important. And um, yeah, I feel like we're starting to get our groove on. Um, yeah, whether we're in Manly, Maroochydore or now Adelaide. So, yeah. Um, good all stuff. Right. Well, to finish off, Although I would love to go uh, longer. Oh, we could. Um, we could, we could talk, talk for days. All sorts of things, um, including uh, – actually, I will finish on this. Um, okay. No, no, no. I'll finish on a couple of things because we like okay. to know who our guest's favourite players are and if they still yeah, go to Demons. we do. Which we'll get to, and I'm presuming he still goes to Demons. Otherwise, it's going to be pretty awkward. Yeah. Um, what really grinds my gears? Mm. Uh, this was a segment that could potentially come into the podcast. What really grinds my gears? Mm. And wow. it's a kind of like observation on the real world, like people that are not paying attention to a green light and don't go when it goes green. Sure, people that who sort of don't stuff. use keep cups. Yes, yes, that sort of. Uh, that's you, you. You guys get it. Um, uh, I was talking to Lingers before I came. Burnsy had a segment on his Twitter account, and I followed him without knowing who Shannon Burns. Well, I knew who you were, obviously, two-time Premiership player. Two we time. hadn't met yet, and I started following Burnsy purely for his funny tweets. Okay. On a segment, what really grinds my gears, and the social media department of Geelong told him to stop it. They did. Why was that? Um, probably stepping outside my lane. Um, did you go after high ups at Geelong? Yeah, look, I, I think they felt that was probably coming at some point. Um, my following was starting to really build. Um, they were probably threatened by that. Yeah. Um, didn't want the following to be greater than the club at Been the there. time. Um, it's all politics. You guys get it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, look, as, as it was really coming to its peak, we were, I was cut off at the knees and became shorter than I already am. And um, <laughs> that seems, that seems uh, almost seem like, uh, I wouldn't say illegal because it's not, but um, mm. it seems a bit like a, you, Geelong's a bit of a dictatorship. Is that, did you uh, feel that? Yeah, look, I don't want to make headlines here. Yeah. Um, sure. And you will, but, this podcast does. Yeah, so I understand that. I, I know. Um, well, the implications of what you say are. But so, how, but that, how does that fly? I mean, it's your 
your opinion, your... Oh, it was my expression at the time. It was, you know, um, it was who I was. And, um, yeah, it's been hard. It's been hard. I've, I've seen so many things that have grown in my gear since and haven't yeah. been able to tell the world. <laughs> well, I'm not well, sure. This it, could potentially be yeah. an opening point. And I'll check before next episode. I don't think we're in communist Russia, so we should have freedom of speech on our side. But if, yep. if we're not, we could. That could be, be a thing. Be careful. Russians yep. do listen to the captain's run, so we've got to yeah. be careful there. Well, we'll get... This could be a thing. I like, I like the sound yeah. of it. Let's quickly wrap this up. Yes. Um, favorite player currently um I'm, i love Stephen may i yeah. just yeah that's, that's, that's true a, colin garland went Stephen yeah. may as well didn't he yeah and that's coming from a forward yeah i just yeah he's just a brute and hits harder than than anyone really um i just love the way he goes about it so and your thoughts uh within like 30 seconds or so your thoughts on uh melbourne this year um well i think we're we're right in the sweet spot of going going high or yep. going low and uh you know what well, this week's obviously an important week for us i'm, I'm feeling good vibes sure. I'm, i hope everyone in this room is feeling good vibes yep. um and um yeah i'm excited i'm excited about what the what this season can bring it's it's one of those years and it can come from anywhere anyone can mm. do it and um yeah i'm i'm on, i'm still well and truly on the demon train so well you'd want to be we're paying you so thanks very much (laughs) thank you uh, thank you shannon um that's another episode of the captain's run good one uh just short and sharp uh got some feedback going a little bit too long yeah that's Um, all right we're going to our match review now to work out uh how we beat adelaide and hopefully how we beat north melbourne which will be exciting bernsey thanks for coming absolute pleasure max thanks for having us uh tune in next week